So uh, hello, this time this video is on uh, the anatomy of the hand as you can see. In specific it will be covering the palmar aponeurosis and the ulnar nerve distribution in the hand. So we start up with the palmar aponeurosis. So before I begin this, I would like to introduce you the bony prominences of uh, the hand which, are in, which is important because they form the framework uh, for the other structures. So in this case, there are eight carpal bones, as you know, and uh, I've, I've drawn these circles to figure out the places where they fall. And uh, the sizes may not be accurate because they're smaller in size. Uh, so it will start from here. The first one is scaphoid. The second one is lunate. The third one is triquitrum. The fourth one is pisiform. And then for the fifth one, we go here. It is trapezium, trapezoid, capitid, and hamid. Okay, and uh, you can see this rectangular form, and this is the flexor retinaculum. It is a band like structure uh, above and below which many structures pass through. Okay, so uh, medi the attachments of the flexor retinaculum are as follows medially, that is, to the ulna, to the ulna side of uh, the hand, it is attached to the pisiform bone and the hook of hamid, and to the radial side, it is attached to the scaphoid and the crest of trapezium scaphoid and the crest of trapezium so the structures going passing above the flexor retinaculum uh, is the ulnar nerve and artery and then the palmar aponeurosis so these are the main structures and the structures passing below the palmar aponeurosis are uh, the flexor digitorum profundus tendons along with the lumbricals above which the tendons of flexor retinaculum superficialis also pass through. Of course, both of them lie below this flexor, this flexor retinaculum tendon. This is a band-like structure which also serves as a gateway. Okay, so it is through this retinaculum that ev each and every structure passes the palm. Okay, so now we move on to the palmar aponeurosis. Palmar aponeurosis is a triangular shaped structure. And uh, it is a triangular shaped aponeurosis and the ba apex is proximal here. It is not distant but proximal. And uh, the base, it extends distally. It divides into the superficial and deep strata. So you can see this division. Maybe here it is very clear. So this is the division. And here it is divided into the superficial and deep strata. Superficial is attached to the dermis and the deep strata, it divides into four slips. So you can see these four slips, one, two, three, and four. Okay, four slips, um, which with the head opposite the heads of the metacarpals of the medial four digits. Each slips, each slip divides into two parts, which are continuous with the fibrous flexor sheets. So they get continuous with the fibrous flexor sheets. Okay, and uh, extensions passes deep to the transverse metacarpal ligaments and the capsule metaphal metacarpophalangeal joints and the sides of the base of the proximal phalanx. So here, right here, there are some digital nerves and vessels. So in between these gaps, the digital nerve and vessels pass through. So this is the, this is all about the palmar aponeurosis. The function of the palmar aponeurosis is that it fixes the skin of the palm and thus improves the grip. So when you ho catch hold of something, this palmar aponeurosis enhances the gripping capacity and uh, hence it also protects the underlying tendons. As I said, a number of tendons pass through the flexor retinaculum and the palmar aponeurosis. So this acts as a protective layer for all those tendons. So that's all about the palmar aponeurosis. So now we are moving on to the ulnar nerve. Ulnar nerve is the main nerve of the hand, like the lateral plantar nerve for the foot. So this red, so this red uh, lining, it is the ulnar nerve. Okay, now we are going to see the distribution just in the hand, not anywhere else, just the hand. Okay, so the ulnar nerve lies superficial to the flexor retinaculum, as we've already seen. It is covered only by the superficial slip of the retinaculum, because we've already know there are like two slips, superficial and deep. It is just covered by a superficial slip. It terminates by dividing into a superficial branch and a deep branch. So this is the superficial branch and this is the deep branch. 
Okay. Uh, superficial branch is cutaneous. The deep branch passes through the muscles of the hypothenar eminence. So the muscles of the hypothenar eminence lie here and that of the thenar muscles right here. Okay. So the hypothenar muscles, it starts here uh, to lie in the concavity of the deep palmar arch to end in the adductor pollicis. This triangular shaped uh, this represents the adductor pollicis since it, uh, if, uh, if I shade it, it might hide the other structures. I've just drawn this. So this is the adductor pollicis muscle. It is represented like this. And then uh, now we'll move on to the radi rela relations of uh, the ulnar nerve. The ulnar nerve enters the palm by passing superficial to the flexor retinaculum. Uh, between the pisiform, this is the pisiform bone and uh, the ulnar vessels which I have not indicated here but it will be lying here okay and uh, so then here it divides into the superficial branch and the deep branch superficial branch it supplies the fingers the fingers the medial fingers while the deep branch now we will look into it so first we will see the superficial terminal branch which supplies the palmaris brevis so this dark this pigmented area it is the palmaris brevis i have colored it here because since it is a deeper lying structure you cannot see it well you cannot actually see it so i have uh, colored it here so this is where the palmaris uh, brevis is located and a muscular branch supplies it. So a muscular branch to the palmaris brevis and then the cutaneous branches. So these are the digital nerves. Okay, and uh, the digital nerves further divide into a medial branch and a lateral branch. This is the medial branch and this is the lateral branch. The lateral branch again divides into two proper digital nerves. Two proper digital nerves and this is the common digital nerve this area in specific is the common digital nerve so what is the medial branch supply the medial branch supplies the medial side of the little finger this is the medial side of the little finger and then the lateral branch supplies the adjoining sides of both the ring finger and the little finger this is the ring finger and this is the little finger these are the adjoining sides and these are supplied by the lateral branch uh, the position of division of the lateral branch is not clear so you can cross check it a few books have mentioned it here and a few have mentioned it here and uh, even in some cadavers, the, the point of uh, division may vary. So you can cross check it anytime you want. Okay, now we're moving on to the deeper branches. Deeper branches terminate by supplying the adductor pollicis, which I've already mentioned before. And uh, the other one, and it occasionally also supplies the deep head of flexor pollicis brevis. Other than this, so what else does the deep branch do? At its origin, it supplies the muscles of hypothenar eminence, which I've already mentioned here, the muscles of hypothenar eminence. And then as it passes through, um, it passes through the palm and it supplies the medial lumbricals and eight introsi. These branches, these supply the, me these supply the eight introsi and uh, the two lumbricals, okay? And uh, sometimes an articular joint, an articular branch, it supplies the wrist joint. So that's it for the ulnar nerve. Um, now, before finishing it, I would like to mention one thing about the palmar aponeurosis. Um, I've mentioned that it, all, it, it serves as a protective layer for the tendons. Not just for the tendon, it also serves as a protective layer for the vessels and nerves. So that's it for this video. And it's all about the palmar uh, aponeurosis and the ulnar nerve. If you've liked this video, add a thumbs up. This could be encouraging for uh, me to post further videos. Thank you so much.